Hey folks, this is Kalani. Shadowlands is just around the corner, literally less than two months away at this point, so I figured there was no better time to sit down and have a chat about all the reasons you should be getting excited for this next expansion. So here are my top 10 reasons, fresh off the beta. So what are we waiting for? Let's jump right in. One of the most important reasons why I'm super hyped for this expansion is the complete and utter lack of anything weird on gear. We won't see Titan forging or war forging on gear, so those random item level bumps are gone. There's currently nothing that even looks anything remotely like these systems either, so if you're worried about shadow forging or ghost forging or shadowy ghost forging popping out of nowhere, you don't need to fret. We've left behind the RNG item level boosts. We also will see the removal of corruption and corruption effects in the pre-patch, so we won't have to deal with that either, and there's no similar system replacing it in Shadowlands. Gear is gear is gear. The only random factor left is whether or not your piece rolls with a socket, which is still a slight annoyance, but it's way better than everything else that we've played with in Battle for Azeroth. So when you get a heroic piece, it's a heroic piece. You can upgrade it to a mythic piece and then you're more or less done with that item slot. There's no need to hope and bonus roll for a chance at a measly plus five item level upgrade on absolutely everything that you're doing. There's no need to run heroic over and over again to try and get lucky with the Titan Forge. When you get a piece of gear, that's it. You have that piece of gear for that difficulty. It is going to be so amazing for gear to be so much simpler once again, but one really cool thing that this allows is best in slot lists. Sure, okay, you could make a best in slot list before in BFA, but honestly, how much did they matter? An item from a specific dungeon or boss might be a best in slot, so you farm for it on the highest difficulty you can. Right? You get the max base item level for your best in slot item, but then along comes a random piece with bad stats, but oh look, it titan forged to the item level cap and it rolled with a socket. Suddenly, your best in slot list means nothing at all, because the random proc chance on gear created an item you can't really account for. The same thing happened with Corruption, but 10 times worse. What use is a best in slot list when the Corruption effects threw your entire setup out of whack? But now that gear is just gear, you can go back to comparing items directly. You can look for your best dungeon loot and farm for specific items without the worry of a random proc throwing everything off. This also means that if you're a heroic or mythic raider, you can pinpoint exact pieces from the raid that you want to go after and get this. You can be done with a character. You can achieve best in slot status once more in the Shadowlands expansion. That might seem like something small, but planning out my gear and creating best in slot lists is something I am incredibly excited for next expansion. Another cool change in Shadowlands relating to gear is the return of PvP vendors. I know, I know, how exciting, but how on earth are we ever going to find them? I guess that might be why the dev team planted them right in the middle of Ouroboros just to make things easy, but this means that anyone who even remotely enjoys PvP can once again choose the gear that they want instead of having to rely entirely on RNG for items to drop from arenas or battlegrounds, and then when you start earning the higher PvP currency in Shadowlands it will be conquest once again, you can pick which upgrades to get first, instead of following the conquest loot train. In Battle for Azeroth, you filled up your conquest bar and collected your item every week, but if you needed braces, and just braces, and braces weren't an option for another five weeks, you literally couldn't do anything about that. You had to get the boots, and then the hands, and then the waist first. Even if you didn't need them, we're back to the good old days of actually having some control over our gearing path in PvP, which is fantastic to see. This will never be a bad thing, in my opinion. Giving us more choice in how we progress means we'll actually care about the journey a little bit more. If you provide gear as milestones, it feels more like a treadmill. And let's be honest, we all love shopping for gear. We want to be able to pick and choose between upgrades, especially when they come from a vendor. So PvP vendors coming back to the game is definitely a reason to be excited, whether you PvP as your main source of entertainment or even if you just use it as an additional source of gearing. It's good for everyone. It's not just about gear though. The Shadowlands expansion is changing how the entire game works for leveling up. The level squish brings us down to more manageable numbers. We can level from 1 to 10 through the starting experience, then continue from 10 to 50 through any old expansion's content. 
Yep, any expansion for the entire leveling gig. Do whatever you want, any expansions, dungeons, any quests, chop and change. The sky is the limit. Okay, well, level 50 is the actual limit, but you get the idea. World of Warcraft will literally never be the same again after this expansion, and it's all changing for the better. I'm actually excited to level up some alts when all these changes are put in. I'm going to have to save a few alts that I want to get up to max level ready for Shadowlands just for pre-patch. Then we can level from 50 to the new max of 60 when Shadowlands actually launches. Having the level cap at 60 isn't just a nod at where World of Warcraft begun. It's also far less intimidating when you try to get newer players into the game. Imagine if Shadowlands had released with, and now you can get up to level 130. If you've never played WoW before, level 130 sounds like you have a long, long grind before you can actually get into the latest expansions content, which is never going to be a good thing. New players coming into the game help keeps the game alive, so creating an experience that doesn't push them away is fantastic and crucial. But the way that leveling is set up now, you're actually kind of encouraged to go back on a different alt or different path to play through the other expansions that you might not have experienced yet. They're all laid out, nice and neat, waiting for you to pick one. And then maybe when you level another character, you'll pick a different one. This is so streamlined compared to what it used to be. Instead of hopping around timelines, having four war chiefs visible at the same time, and saying several key characters are dead when we just picked up a quest from them, now you can complete an entire timeline and basically know right from the get-go that this is all happening in the past. There are also many improvements to help newer players get into the game in the first place so we have more players to play with at max level. The new intro zone of Exiles Reach does a great job at explaining how the game works and what you should expect when you venture out on your own. Brand new players are also guided directly into Battle for Azeroth storyline so they don't have the potentially overwhelming choice of what expansion to play in. This is good for a few reasons. First, they don't have that weird choice to make as their first experience through the game. Second, they get to play through some of the most up-to-date content. Say what you will about Battle for Azeroth in general, but the storyline and questing was definitely worthy of praise. And third, they learn the most recent goings-on in our world, and why we're ending up in the Shadowlands. Or at least they'll learn parts of it. It also doesn't hurt that leveling in Shadowlands from 1 to 50 will be significantly faster than it ever has been before, and you don't need to collect extra goodies like heirlooms to achieve that fast speed. So hopefully more players will also make it to Endgame to join us in raids, dungeons and PvP. Another really cool addition to look forward to in Shadowlands is a different type of Endgame content, Torghast. I know Torghast is in some... Interesting changes, but it's still a fantastic system and an incredibly fun type of content. It's kind of a combination of solo play, with dungeons, with personal goals, and almost an endless progression path. There's two types of Torghast run, a cell block run, which consists of six floors, and a twisting corridor run, which is 18 floors. The cell block runs are where you'll find components for legendary crafting, so that's what a lot of players will focus on to begin with, but if you just want to let loose and have some crazy fun with the anima powers, the Twisting Corridor run lets you go for three times as long, so you can collect three times as many animal powers and become literally unkillable, for 18 floors anyway. You can head into Torghast on your own or with a full party of five, so it's a case of play your own way. You can also go in with two, three or four, it's completely up to you. Getting higher up in the cell block section of Torghast will earn you more legendary components, and the great thing is, if you clear a higher floor or stage, you earn the legendary crafting currency from all lower runs, if you haven't completed them already in that week. So you don't have to do every difficulty of every run every single week, because this content has a weekly loot lock, you can just do the highest one and get all of the rewards in one fell swoop. So for the players who are worried about Torghast taking up all of their playtime, don't worry about it. That is not the plan for the cell blocks and legendary crafting. That kind of is the plan for the twisting corridors though. You can spend as much time as you want climbing and climbing, starting on a higher floor every time and progressing for your 18 limit before starting it all over again. It's a lot of fun, the anima powers let you go crazy, and you can collect a bunch of different cosmetic rewards from the twisting corridors as well. The gameplay is great, the rewards are definitely going to be worth it, and the dev team can add new floors, new layouts, new tile sets, new monsters. 
anything, really, very, very easily, which gives Torghast a kind of longevity that we haven't really seen in a World of Warcraft system before. But the best part, the truly amazing thing about Torghast, is because it's a standalone sandbox type of area, the dev team can let you go nuts. The anima powers that you can pick up are absolutely, absurdly, brokenly overpowered in some cases. You can build different setups, empower different abilities, play in completely different ways each run. It really is a crazy amount of fun. The dev team have also said that they might use Torghast as a testing arena for new spells, talents, legendary effects, all kinds of stuff. And they can do that pretty freely because at the end of the day, what happens in Torghast stays in Torghast. I'm very excited to see what everyone thinks when the expansion goes live because we've never had something like Torghast before. Well, I guess one thing doesn't stay in Torghast. The legendary items that you can craft with the Rune Carver. Legendaries are going to be very interesting this time around because you'll be making them yourself. There's no super lucky random drops that you need. You don't have to pray to R and Jesus to get the correct or good legendary in one of your first few. It's quite simply a case of collect the items you need from the appropriate sources, none of which are RNG, by the way, and take it to the rune carver so he can whip up an amazing legendary for you. You pick the effect, you pick the gear slot that it's going to be on out of the available choices, you can even pick the stats that go on your legendary. You can craft every aspect of this thing, which means if one legendary is definitely your best by far, you can choose to craft it first. Nothing is stopping you. If you have a couple different ones you want to craft to cover a few specs you want to play, you can create them in any order you want. All you have to do is collect the required items. The effects themselves come from dungeon bosses, raid bosses, world bosses, the PvP vendor, the weekly chest and reputation vendors, so quite a mixed bag there. But the key is you will know exactly where each legendary effect comes from so you can work towards it in your own time. Priest legendary effect 1 might come from the PvP vendor, and effect 2 might come from the dungeon boss. In that case, you just need to farm up enough honor to buy the first one and run the correct dungeon until the boss drops your legendary effect for the second one. Put that together with a crafted item from professions, some inscription missives that allow you to choose the stats, and all that's left is to earn enough of the legendary crafting reagent from your Torghast runs. We're supposed to be able to craft our very first legendary very quickly, and most of the legendaries provide powerful bonuses, so it's going to be a fantastic moment when you craft your first one. All in all, I think bringing back legendaries is a good move. They worked really well in Legion towards the end, but being able to craft them ourselves is incredibly exciting in my books. Professions will play a very large part of the legendary crafting process as well, because you're going to need a base crafted item for every single legendary you create. Want a cloak? Go see a tailor. Get yourself a cloak. Want one of those shiny rings? You're going to need to be a jewel crafter or get in touch with one. Suddenly, professions actually mean something again because they're directly tied to your character's power progression. So you can feel better about actually leveling and using your professions, and players who love to craft and gather and all that wonderful stuff can feel useful as well. Legendary crafting alone should keep professions relevant throughout the entire expansion, but that's not all we have to look forward to this time around. So many can consumables are being reintroduced for Shadowlands. We have the usual enchants, on more slots, I might add. We have flasks, potions, food. But we also have weapon oils that interact with other consumables, sharpening stones and blunt stones, leather armor kits, and scribes can even create a new consumable that will let you choose exactly what secondary stats you want on some pieces of crafted gear. This really is going to be a fantastic expansion for professions, both in terms of feeling useful and actually getting something out of your professions, and for making gold as well. All of these little consumables will add up over time, so if you're the one making them, you can look forward to a healthy sack of gold in Shadowlands. And don't even get me started on selling the legendary base items, that's going to bring in some serious moolah at the start for sure. But perhaps one of the best things about the Shadowlands expansion that is incredibly exciting is the fact that there is no, I repeat, there is no endless grind. We won't see artifact power or anything like it. No more heart levels or artifact levels to chase. In Shadowlands, the only progression that directly affects our power level is Renown. By working with your Covenant, you can earn Renown, which will lead to more Soulbind and Conduit unlocks, as well as various other upgrades in your Covenant, none of which will be tied into your power directly. So really, the only thing you might have to keep up with is Renown and Soulbinds, but Renown is capped on a per week basis. Doing a couple of daily activities a few times a week is enough to keep up, and this system will have catch-ups built into it right from the get-go. 
So you should never be too far behind the current max of renown. It's going to work kind of like Conquest did in BFA. You know, if you were behind several weeks, you could earn several weeks worth of gear rewards in a single week, providing you did a little bit more work. That's how it's going to work. The catcher will be useful if you miss a few weeks for any alts you level up or even if you swap covenant. And that's it. We can collect anima, but that's only used to upgrade your covenant bits and bobs, your follower table, anima conductor, covenant mini game. Again, nothing that affects your power directly. Honestly, if you really wanted to, you could ignore your covenant almost entirely and still be on the same power level as anyone else with the same gear. You might ask about Torghast and the endless farming there. The Twisting Corridors, which is the quote unquote endless version of Torghast, only rewards cosmetics. There's no power to be gained there. It's just for fun. So what this means is essentially you can play as many alts as you want and it's going to be very quick and easy to get them caught up. If you want to swap character partway through, you may have to catch up on Renown, but with catch up mechanics implemented at the start, that shouldn't take too long at all. And because it's capped weekly, you know exactly where everyone else is. For anything and everything else, you can spend time catching up, but you won't be weaker because you decided to swap character. The real key here though, the cracker, is that you can look at a character and say, yep, I'm done for the week. I can't get any stronger. I've done my renowned stuff and look forward to the next week where you can make a bit more progress. That doesn't mean there's nothing to do, but anything else that you do on that character would be because you want to, not because you feel like you have to for fears of being left behind. And that is perhaps why Shadowlands might be one of the better expansions we've had. There are some daily or weekly checklists to work your way through to keep up to date. Renown, Soulbinds, Conduits, Gearing, mostly the usual stuff at Endgame. But then you have the option of digging into so many other systems just for fun. The Covenant minigames, throw a tea party for the Venthyr or build an abomination. Or lots of abominations as a necro lord. You don't really get any huge power-ups for doing it, but you can get some cosmetic rewards, probably achievements, titles, goodies to show off, you know, prestige items that don't increase your item level. You can climb as high as you want in Torghast. You can unlock and upgrade everything in your Covenant Sanctum. Get the mission table followers and all the missions. Pop down to the moor and free as many souls as you can while trying to evade the jailer as long as possible. There's a wide variety of things not tied to character power, which is a nice breath of fresh air. It's it's like transmog farming, mount farming and pet farming. Does it increase your damage? No. Is it still amazingly fun and awesome? Absolutely. You can go at your own pace, focus on what you want to do, and just have fun with it. Shadowlands is an expansion to have fun with, and that's the most exciting part of the whole ordeal. I cannot wait for this expansion to release so we can all jump in and experience it all together. And that's my top reasons to get excited for the Shadowlands expansion. I think this may end up being the most popular and most well-liked expansion that we've had in such a long time, mainly because there's no big pressure forcing your hand this time. You can work towards what you want at your own pace, and the absence of RNG in almost every type of content is amazing. There are a few pain points which are easy to focus on when the game hasn't released yet, but when those floodgates open, oh I know I'm going to have a blast and I hope you do as well. But what do you think of the Shadowlands expansion as a whole? What are you most excited about and are there any issues you think still need to be resolved? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. If you want to explore what's left of the beta, hang out with us live or maybe even help us get ready for Shadowlands. You can find us over at twitch.tv slash kalanitv. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday at 12 p.m. PST and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now and if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names at the end of every video a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who subscribed on Twitch already and to our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals well now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave and if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun and as always I will see you next time.